I rebuke the satanic wind of April in my house. I'm not hearing you. Uh huh. Oh, yes. Let it be get calm in my house. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Open your mouth and pray. Rebuke the satanic wind of April in your house. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rabo Soko Maria Basse Kema. Jesus, my name, we pray. Amen. Somebody is free. Amen. I say you are free in Jesus' name. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Please, you may sit down. Sit down. Tell your neighbor, I'm glad to see you in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Today we are at the gate of our 12 years. So we begin to celebrate our 12 years today. Amen. 12 years of no humanizing. 12 years of no scandal. 12 years of integrity. 12 years of prosperity. 12 years of holiness. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus Christ is building says a push. And the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Jesus Christ is building every family that worship in this house. Amen. And the gate of hell shall not prevail against your family. Amen. No matter what you are seeing in the life of your children, the gate of hell shall not prevail against your children. Amen. Not one of your children will be useless. Amen. All of them will be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, Father, it is 12 years. It is 12 years. Give, me Give me a gift. So you need a gift that will crush the head of those problems. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to ask God for a gift for these 12 years. And every one of us here will join, um, will join me to ask also God a gift. Many of us have been very faithful in this ministry right from inception. And I can tell you by now, your life will never be the same again. Amen. Everything your hand will do, anything your hand is doing shall be successful in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Twelve years of holiness, twelve years of integrity, 12 years of no nonsense. 12 years of prayer and fasting. There is a reward somebody will receive today. Amen. But they did tell me what kind of reward I must ask God. That will be the word of a wise man or a woman. I will tell you a story that I told you before. There was a man, a rich man, very rich. But he will never give his siblings anything. The only thing that he can give to his, to his family is, is the children of his siblings. The one that will call him uncle. Uncle. 
Now, among those uncle, uh, those that we call this rich man uncle, the boys will not give them anything, but the girls. If the girl say, buy me a house, even if it's a child, tomorrow that girl will have a house. Amen. Now, this auntie went to his brother that is very rich. He said to his daughter, let go to my brother. He's very rich. Ask him, a car? We don't have a car. Ask him a house, he will buy us a house. The moment you finish speaking, he will put money in our bank account. Did you hear me? And the little girl said, yes, ma'am. Then he turned his, he pulled his daughter again, he pulled his ears, he said, listen to me. I did not say go and ask biscuit. I have plenty of them, I will give it to you. So they walked to the house of the uncle rich man. They arrived. The uncle came and hugged his niece, kissed his niece on the head. He said, uncle, uncle, uh, I want to ask something. He said, ask whatever you want. I will give it to you now. He said, give me biscuit. He said, ha, ah. many of us here are like that in front of God. <laughs> give me biscuit. <laughs> I told you many times, plenty of time. I have plenty of biscuit to give to you and chocolate. Don't ever come here, ask God biscuit and chocolate. I will give you any time, and even if I'm sleeping, I'll give it to you. But when you go to God, ask him that which only God can do. When men can look at the blessing, we say, this is God. I thought you would say, amen, loud and clear. Oh, I will not take these 12 years for granted. I will not take it for granted. There is a gift, not only for me, also for my children, both spiritual and physical. Amen. So you are not leaving this place the way you came in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There is a gift you must receive. I pray that you open your heart and receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. They are gift of man and they are gift of God. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. God doesn't change his man when he gives gifts or when he calls someone. In a very simple English, it says, God doesn't take back the gift he has given or forget about the people he calls. From the day you gave your life to Jesus, there is a gift that was put in your hand. If you don't know about it, today the Lord will show you. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes and you will see your gift in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God does not take back the gift he has given or forgot the people that he calls. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, Verse 7. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. God's favor. God's favor has been given to each of us. It was measured out to us by Christ who gave it. That is contemporary English version. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. God's favor has been given to each of us. It was measured out to us by Christ who gave it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, when Jesus ascended on high, he took many captive and gave gift to his people. Jesus gave gift to his people. Christ himself gave the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. You cannot equip people without the gift of God in your hands. And the gift is, come, is coming from the Lord. The wise man say from the book of Proverbs, 
chapter 18, verse 16, New King James. A man gifts, make room for him, and bring him before great men. Raise your voice, say this to me, the gift God has given to me, will usher me to great people in this land of the living. Oh yes, whosoever call himself great, you will see yourself. The gift that God has in, entrusted in you, the gift that God has imparted in you, will take you to greater people in the land of the living. When I'm talking about great people, I'm talking about president of the nations. People, in, people with great influence. People that are even better than the president of the nation. The gift God has put in your hand will take you to them in the name of Jesus Christ. Paul said, now concerning spiritual gift, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Concerning spiritual gift, I do not want you to be ignorant. Oh yes, my ignorance is already dying because the gift of God are irrevocable. When God gives you a gift, he will not take it back. Hallelujah. If I borrow you 5,000, in my mind it will be going, I borrow Brother Amos 5,000. I borrow Brother Amos 5,000. Brother Amos, give me my 5,000. But if God give Brother Amos 5,000, nobody will go to Brother Amos. Give me my 5,000. Why? Because it's from God. Stress-free gift, you are receiving them today in Jesus' name. I will repeat, stress-free gift. You are receiving them today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The one that is dead in your hand will be reactivated in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Concerning spiritual gift, I do not want you to be ignorant. The Spirit decides which gift to give to each of us. Hallelujah. It's the Spirit who decide. Which gift to give to each of us? I cannot do everything. There is something God wants me to do, and that is what I will do. You cannot also do everything, but it is very important for you to discover what God wants me to do so that I can do it well, peacefully. You see those uh, uh, children, when they are playing with the cell phone, they can spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on the phone. They are playing. Because they like to do what they are doing on their phone. But if they change the focus, they say, I want to search for the word of God that say, I will do this in my life. You will see a complete change. When you focus doing something, you will not think about the time. You will just go ahead and do it. And do some more. But when it came into the place of seeking God so that you may know your destiny, it became a challenge. I rebuke that spirit in your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. There is a gift that the Holy Spirit wants you to receive that will make you to live a stress-free life. Praise the Lord. Amen. The manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. The Spirit decides which gift to give to each of us. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is giving the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gift of healing. By the same Spirit, to another the working of miracle, prophecy, to another descending of Spirit, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Hallelujah. Amen. Among all these gifts, if only one is working effectively in your life, this is where I'm calling living a stress-free life. Or anything that makes you stressful, I see them dead today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 
The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to me for somebody else to benefit on it. Yet that gift will usher me to those great people. The manifestation of this word of wisdom, the manifestation of the spirit of the word of wisdom is given to me for somebody to benefit the wisdom of God. The manifestation of the discerning of spirit is given to me for somebody to profit on it. Say this with me again. A man gifts. Make room for him. And bring him before great man. Let us talk about the gift of Joseph. Joseph's gift brought him before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. We all know the story of Joseph. By now he's in the prison. What takes Joseph out of the prison? Somebody said the gift. In the book of Genesis chapter 41, verse 14. Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him quickly out of the dungeon and he shaved, changed his clothing and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, who's speaking? Pharaoh. He's reporting to a prisoner, a former prisoner. Let us call him a former prisoner. Now think about it. A king is reporting now his feeling to a prisoner. <laughs> now, you can see that the game is already changing. The power is already changing hand. If you, as a big as you are, with all the title, now you begin to report to a prisoner, uh, you know that this guy is coming from the prison. You begin to tell him your problem. That means that fellow indeed is not a prisoner. We understand that there are some forces that took him in prison. Every one of you in the prison of the enemy, come out in the name of Jesus, house of Nazareth. Amen. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I've had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. But I've had heard, I've had heard it say, to, say of you that you can understand dreams and interpret it you can understand dream and interpret it among the spiritual gift paul is telling us we have the gift of interpretation of tongues your dream is a spiritual speech every dream is a spiritual speech when you have at least the gift of interpretation of tongue. Let's see where it will take Joseph. If you have those kind of things, from today there will be a complete change in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. There is no one who can interpret my dreams. Raise your voice right where you are. Father, Father impart, to me impart to me the gift of interpretations of tongues. Both spiritual and physical. In the name of Jesus, house of Nazareth. Joseph said to the king, It is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. That is already the word of wisdom. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Whether you like it or not, I'm sure in my imagination I can see Pharaoh pushing your head, pushing his head close to Joseph to listen to him carefully. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh are one, because he had two dreams, but the meaning of all those dreams are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he's about to do. God has shown Pharaoh what he's about to do. God has shown Pharaoh what is about to do? Joseph said to Pharaoh, look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Why? Because there will be a famine for seven good years. 
and seven good years of abundance. God has blessed many of us here. Today they are saying, oh, indeed, I saw the blessing of God in my life, but now I'm struggling. You know what? You did not interpret the blessing God put in your hand by that time. The spirit of wisdom was not enough in you. The fear of God was not in your heart. That is why. A sinner have seen what will happen in his land. Seven years of abundance and seven years of great famine that will wipe out all the success, all the prosperity that was there before. Let me tell you something. You have to think twice. This life we are leading now is not new. It's happened before. Many, many years ago, the blessing of God was so heavily in Egypt. Everybody wants to go and live in Egypt. Like today, everyone wants to go to America. Good life. Let me tell you something. The moment Egyptians began to consult idol, they rejected God. And God shut down their blessing. Read the cases of Egypt in the book of Ezekiel. You will put your hand on your, on your ticks. You will regret. Yet, any time the Bible is speaking about Egypt, it's talking about Africa. If you see the mess in the land of Africa everywhere, those cases still speaking louder. But yet in Africa, we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Those who are redeemed by the blood of Jesus, those cases cannot affect their life. They will live in abundance. They will flourish like a palm tree. Oh, yes. Now, after Egypt, the blessing was transferred to Babylon. Babylon. Everybody wanted to go and live in Babylon. You know the story of Babylon with Nebuchadnezzar, the great king. So the blessing left Egypt. It went to Babylon. Babylon, they began to worship idol. They are divaners. They began to do all the kind of funny things. The blessing left them. When it left Babylon, later we began to speak the empire of Roman, Roman empire. They colonized everybody by that time. They gave the world hard time. What made all those nations to flourish? I'm sure God is after all the blessing of people, not the devil. But the moment you reject God, you bring punishment on yourself. After Empire Romans and uh, the Nazis came to an end, we can see that America received the blessings that everyone can witness today. But look at the way China is coming up. And if you go to China, you will witness the dragon with your physical eyes, not of learning in the book. Hallelujah. The small blessing that God has entrusted any African land, we need to bring more fear of God. Otherwise, we will suffer the same kind of problem again. I thought you say, Amen, Lord, thank you. Now you know what I'm talking about. I will leave you there, so you have to think about it. Let us move a little bit. Joseph is not a citizen of Egypt, but the gift of God in the hand of Joseph rescue all the Israelites. The gift of God that was in the hand of Joseph, the person who profit for it, 100%, still Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Joseph, because of the gift that was in his hand, <laughs> you know, my Bible say, the king king of Egypt, Pharaoh. When Joseph told him, look, look for a discerning and wise man. Put him in charge of the land of Egypt. He did not know that he was appointing himself in that position because in the entire land of Egypt, there was no a discerning man. A discerner is somebody that can see, hmm, the future of this boy of mine will be great. Let me begin to train him now. Why do we go to school? 
Why do we go to school? Are you sure it is the school that gave us life? We go to school to learn some skills so that we can handle others very well, showing good manner. But here there are people with all the diploma of university, no job. They are jobless. They cannot do anything. Why? Because God is not in those diploma. If you are one of those, today your problem has come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. You know what? Whatever Joseph told the king, the king said, can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the Spirit of God? And not one of the Egyptians had the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God was nowhere to be found but only to one person, and the person is a slave. And the love of all the, all the Egyptians are in the hand of this slave. If he says something, they will leave. If he doesn't say anything, they are dead. Look at the proof. The gift in the hand of Joseph caused Pharaoh to put Joseph in charge of his palace. He said, in my house, be in charge. He looked at him and said, no. If you are in charge of my house, that will not be enough. You shall be in charge of my palace. You shall also be in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then he said this, my people, are to submit to your order. When Pharaoh speaks, it is final. Nobody can change it. Are you with me? Because of what? The gift in the hand of Joseph. What kind of gift? This is not the gift of working of miracle. This is not the gift of faith. This is not the gift of prophecy. This is the gift of descending of spirit and the spirit of the word of wisdom. By this simple spirit, by this simple gift that was in the hand of Joseph. Listen to this. When you get into Genesis 47, verse 13, the Bible says, There was no food because the famine was severe both in Egypt and Cana. Both Egypt and Canaan washed away because of the famine. There was no food. Listen to this. Look at what the wisdom and the spirit of descending that was upon Joseph did. Genesis 47, verse 14. Please read with me loud and clear. Joseph collected all the money that was to be found in Egypt and Canaan in payment for the grain they were buying and he brought it to Pharaoh palace Joseph collect a slave collected all the money that was to be found in Egypt and in Canaan somebody say my God is a great God he's doing great things up until now the same, the same kind of spirit that was upon Joseph. Kind of Elohim Adonai El Shaddai. Elohim Adonai. Multiply, it. Multiply it. Give it to me. It. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The same kind of spirit that was upon Joseph. To collect all the money that was to be found in Egypt and Canaan. Multiply it. Give it to me. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. How many of us believe that you are receiving what you are talking about? Amen sleeping. It's like you are not believing. The word of God never changed and it will not change. What happened in the past is still happening up until now. Hallelujah. Our God is good. The spirit of discerning, the spirit of wisdom that was upon Joseph made him to collect all the money that was to be found in Egypt and Canaan. If you have faith, receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
Begin to see yourself collecting money anywhere you are going. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Businessmen and women in this house should be saying amen louder than anybody else. Because I'm praying that your business will never run dry in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is a way to prosper without having a deck. Did you hear that? Yes. There is a way to prosper without having a deck. Where am I going to get the money? What must I do? Can we find anyone like this man? A man in whom is the Spirit of God. That is all. That is what we want. A man who has the Spirit of God. And the man that has the Spirit of God has a special grace. There is a spiritual gift God has put in his hand. Whatever he will do must prosper. The man that entered Egypt as a slave, the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 47, verse 15, when the money of the people of Egypt and Canaan was gone, all Egypt came to Joseph. All Egypt came to who? Joseph and say, give us food. Why should we die before your eyes? Our money is all gone. <laughs> if I was Joseph, I would tell them, when I came here, I came empty-handed, barefooted. Now you see, you want food from my hand. Hmm? Many, many years ago, God prospered you and you misbehave with the blessing of God. Now you are seeking bread in my hand. This word will come to pass in the life of somebody here. Amen. Live a righteous life. You will never dry up. Amen. I say you will never dry up Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is a gift you need to ask God. In these 12 years, don't ask God biscuits. Ask him a spiritual gift that will make you stronger and wiser. Ask God a spiritual gift that will make you stronger than all your enemy anywhere you go. Ask God the spiritual gift of faith. God said to Abraham, what you see, I give you. If you see yourself living in prosperity, that is exactly what will happen for you. Amen. If you see yourself never being sick, that is exactly what will happen to you. Amen. There is a gift you need to ask God in these 12 years. There are many gifts. The gift of the word of knowledge. If you are in a very decent office, ask God for a spiritual gift of the word of wisdom. Ask God for the spiritual gift of the word of knowledge. Ask God wisdom to handle your office and people around you. Those people in your office, even if they are witches, they are against you. But if you have the wisdom of God to handle them, you will run them in the small finger. If you say stand up, they will stand up. If they run, they will run. It can be your boss. Because the gift is in your hand. Amen. I know there are people here in a very good position. Whatever you say, nobody take it. But now, beginning from this very hour, your word will become law in that office in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. No one will lift up his finger unless you speak first. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. There is a gift you need to ask God. I'm just like the mother with the little daughter. Don't ask God biscuit. Don't ask my brother for biscuit. I have plenty of them to give. There is a gift you need to receive from God. Now, the Bible says, if you have two witnesses, the word you are speaking is true. Let's go to Daniel. Let's go to Daniel. Why I like Daniel is that I will never stop talking about Daniel. An opportunity was given to him. And he did not take it for granted. Daniel, you will save in the house of the king. Daniel began to equip himself. Without anybody telling Daniel, learn this, do this, do this. Nobody told Daniel, go ahead, pray and fast. Daniel said, mm, me, serving in the house of the king, I'm starting with fasting. 
He took three years of prayer and fasting. He did not enjoy chicken. Any meat did not pass through his mouth. He knew one day he would be eating meat, but not now. There is a time to eat meat. Let me equip myself with prayer and fasting for three good years. When he finished, his life changed. But there were people that was mocking them. They don't eat meat, they don't drink wine. They don't eat meat, they don't drink wine. They were mocking them. But he knew what he was aiming. Saving in the house of the king, no, I will not take it for granted. When they are best people, I will be the best of the best. That was the mindset of Daniel. Uh, you know the story, the king had a dream. All those kings are always having dreams. But this time, the king is troubled <clears throat> with the dream he had. He doesn't know how to handle himself. He doesn't know what to do. My Bible says, from the book of Daniel chapter 2 verse 6, the king is speaking to Daniel. Say it again, a man gift. Speak as if you are living. Say, a man gift. Make room for him. And bring him before great man. Daniel chapter 2 verse 6. Read with me if you can. But if you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive from me gift and reward and great honor. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. Among the gifts Paul is telling us, we have also one of the gifts of interpretations of tongues. Luke is repeating again. There is always a gift somewhere that will appear that somebody needs to solve the difficult problem that is in that place. Hallelujah. If you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive from me gift. The gift, the first gift you desire from God is the gift of God. Then, the gift of God brings the gift of man. When the gift of man comes into your hand, you will praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Concerning spiritual gift, I do not want you to be ignorant. The Spirit decides which gift to give to each of us. You know? I don't ask God for one gift. I will not say give me only the gift of the word of wisdom. No, I ask all the gifts that God has listed in the Bible. It will depend to his own spirit now to locate which one I desire the most. I thought you would say amen loud and clear. <laughs> the manifestation of the spirit to interpret dreams is a gift that was given to Daniel for King Nebuchadnezzar to profit. The gift in your hand, somebody will profit. The same gift in your hand will take you to great man and great woman. The same gift. Daniel said to the king, no wise man, enchanters, magician, or diviner, can explain to the king the mystery he has asked about. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mystery. He has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in days to come. When Jesus came, he said, the spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. He will tell you what is yet to come. The spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is a gift to you and to me, what are we doing with the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit will tell you what is yet to come. But look the way we treat the Holy Spirit. Look the way we abuse the Holy Spirit. With the same mouth we say, Holy Spirit, come. With the same mouth we say, a lot of nonsense that come out of our mouth. That push the Holy Spirit away. We know the story of Sapphira and Ananas. 
they saw wonderful works being displayed during that period of time on the feet of the apostle. People brought money and put on the feet of the apostle. You don't hear an apostle saying, bring offering, pay that. People knew God. They gave themselves, first of all, to the Lord. Then by the will of God also to the works of God that was displayed by the hand of the apostle. People, nobody told them, bring tithe, pay offering, do this and do that. People themselves, they brought money and put it on the feet of the apostle. But Ananas and Sapphira, they came to try the spirit of God. You know what happened to them? They say, well, I'm going to sell my property and bring the money. I will give it as a gift for the works of God. Came with the money on the feet of the on the feet of Peter. Peter asked, Is this the amount of the property that you have sold? He said, Yes. Peter asked him, Why are you lying to the Holy Spirit? You are not lying to man, but to God. After saying those things, the ananas died. Rather, he fell and died. The boy took him, went to bury him. By that time, I don't know how they did it, but that's the way it happened. No policeman came to arrest Peter. Why did you kill Ananas? No one opened his mouth. Do you think there were no police? There were no law? By the way, Peter is not a, he's not a president. He's not a king. He's just a man of God. Ordinary man of God, but with extraordinary power. Why did you allow Satan to fill your heart with lie that you have lied to the Holy Spirit? You did not lie to men, but to God. He fell and died. The wife came, Sapphira. She came. Peter asked the same question. Is that the amount uh, you sold the property? The wife have drained the husband with all the lie. Yes, sir. That, why are you also are lying? Why are you trying to test the Holy Spirit? The woman fell and died. Today, people say, no, that things happen in the past. It doesn't happen now. They are lying to you. It's happened up until now. I'm telling you, it's happened up until now. Up until now, it's happening. Why are you saying this? I want to help somebody here. Giving is not to force anybody. Giving must come from the heart. If you don't have, keep quiet. Did you hear what I just said now? If you don't have, just keep quiet. Take it easy. Allow those who are giving, even the little one, allow them to give. We understand the secret of giving before all of you to come in this ministry. Before all of you, I'm saying it well. Before all of you to come. Working with the wise will make you wiser. One day we went to visit Esther, an old age home. We saw old people in the mercy of themselves. They only eat as a result of what churches give them. As a result of what churches give them, not even the government. This is their own organization. They welcome black men, white men, South African in that old age. They look after them. Sometimes they cannot control them. Sometimes they go white. Now think about a very old woman, a very old man, in the state of epilepsy and madness, they are in that Esther. We went there with Dr. Bev, with my wife, with some people. All of us cry before they die. If you see the way these people are suffering, if, you don't, if tears doesn't come down, you are a crocodile. <laughs> I can't tell you all of us break down. Nobody... And the Spirit of God came upon me heavily. By that time, I was not yet a pastor. I was a security guard. I told my wife, from today, 
let us remove some money and send to this old age. We became pastor. We're still sending money in that old age. Before this ministry started, we sent money in that old age. Up until today, when I brought people in our finances department, I told them, I may sleep without eating anything, but make sure there is an amount of money going to Esther, old age home. Amen. Amen. We send money up until today. Now, there is a disaster that has taken place in Mozambique, in Malawi, and Zimbabwe. I told you, please, let us help these people. Amen. Amen. Do you know how much money we contributed? All the money, I will tell you, is not more than 3,500 rand. That is the money you gave. The 10 rand, the 20 rand, the 50 rand, the 100 rand. But I'm okay with it. It's not a problem. The best of it is that you have given something at least to some people, but some fellow complain. They say, why do you give money only to Congolese and to Mozambican people uh, while the South African are suffering? Now I believe you have the answer. I'm a very wise person with the little wisdom God has given to me. I cannot cast out demons in this land without blessing the elders of this land. The secret of warfare touch the heart of the uh, less privileged people of the land, then you will cast out demons. If I call my son, Pastor Ushe, he will tell you a story that will puzzle you. Some of our pastors left the church, they went to cast out demons. When they cast out demons, they went home to sleep, the demon came back, he said, you cast us out in the church, now we are in your home. They beat the pastor. The pastor became sick. Spiritual force, you don't compare it with your knowledge. There are two things different. For you to have full access in the land, touch the heart of the elders of the land. Feed them. You know what? I will tell you, where did I learn those things? So, you see, to receive good training from strong men of God, genuine men of God, you cannot live a defeated life. We all learn from somebody. Now we have our 12 years of no scandal. Let me tell you the secret of success. Whatever God has put in my hand, I say, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. If there is no food in my fridge, you don't know about those things. I and my wife will agree. We will never open our mouth. Give me. Never. We will say, God, there is no food in the fridge. We are fasting now. <laughs> oh, Yes. There are times, ask my wife, you say, are you going to eat? I say, no, I'm not eating. Tell that food I'm fasting. After three days, we will meet. After seven days, I we will meet. I will still eat. There will be a time for me to eat. Today is our 40 days, the last day of 40 days of prayer and fasting. Is it not so? And you see, for 40 days of prayer and fasting, we came here to cry for you, for God to bless you. Now you are speaking evil against this church. Anytime I lay my hand on you, it will not be a blessing. It will be a curse on you. I'm telling you the truth. I will tell you the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Come, let us build the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a gift God wants to put in your hand. Look at the gift in the hand of Joseph. Did he pay tight? Did he give offering? No. But the wisdom of God that was burning in his heart took him from nobody to somebody. And yet he still acknowledged God by honoring God. Nebuchadnezzar is a powerful king, but he was in need. He needed a man of God. When God wants to bless you, he will raise up men in the land. When God was taking the Israelites out of Egypt, he did not raise up politicians. He raised up Moses. He will stretch his hand and the sea stop and people will cross. He will stretch his hand and the sea will flow back. Can you do those kind of things with your human knowledge? Can you do those things? Last night you were sleeping like a baby. Do you know that there was a group of people here praying for you, for you just to walk out of your house, come in this church without car accident, 
and you must go back home also without car accident. And the weak will flourish for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now you come and you abuse us because of 3,000 hands. In this church, I thank God for people God has put around me. They can feel what I'm feeling and everyone do his best in his office. My hand cannot be everywhere in this church. No way is it impossible. I have people do this with the skill God has put in you, has entrusted in you. Help the church. Help the church grow. Help the church. Jesus is building the church. The more you, 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 you input anything to build up the house of God, God also will build up your family. Amen. There are machines that scan the body to find the sickness in your body. Those machines, I can tell you, they will never scan demons. But when you come here, this hand will scan them out. Yeah. We will know the problem that is inside of you. Let me tell you the truth. Why some people don't stay for classes of deliverance? Why? Because they know that there is a scanning machine in his right hand. If you go there, you will speak rubbish. I'm not lying to you. If we try to put it there, you will see. You put his hand. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> well, if your husband says, you are a witch, you say, no, I'm not a witch. What are the proof? You just come here. Eh? Allow this hand, this simple hand. Let us allow it on your head. Anytime we put this hand on your head, people go, <laughs> You also around the world, welcome to the classes of deliverance at CFC Push with the man of God, Dr. Shiko Apua. Remember that Jesus Christ is Lord and my name is Guku. The man of God, Dr. Shiko Apua, will be moving from one class to another, praying for people. There will be manifestations. The captive will set free by the power of God. Viewers, today is your day to overthrow and be pulled out of the kingdom of darkness. The book of Obadiah tells us that on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. The house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Therefore, open up your hearts, stretch forth your faith, and believe the word of God to reach you no matter where you are, no matter your situation. les problèmes acharnés. Toute affliction acharnée dans ma vie meurt au nom puissant de Jésus-Christ. Je vais prier encore. Oppresseur acharné, oppressant ma, ma vie, reçois le feu. Meurt au nom puissant de Jésus-Christ. Nous lisons dans Matthieu chapitre 4, verset 37. Hey! 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 
Ucho. Je suis un tel malin, marin, qui pourvoit la fiction dans ma vie. Sa prière le Seigneur meurt au nom puissant de Jésus-Christ. Prêtre acharné de Satan, oppressant ma vie, au nom puissant de Jésus-Christ, meurt. Oh, so it was only hand. God is here to help us. So let us take advantage on the blessing that God has put in our hand. Praise the Lord. Did we learn something today? Receive the gift of the word of wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive the gift of the word of knowledge in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive the gift of faith. Receive the gift of prophecy. He said, in the last day, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughter will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servant, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. Receive the spirit of prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. The spiritual gift that has been made available for you, receive them today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive the gift of healing. You shall lay hand on the sick and the sick will recover. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive the gift of working of miracle. Yeah. By your hand, more than 5,000 people will be eating in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Receive the gift of descending of spirit. Yeah. Receive the different kind of speaking in tongues in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. Receive the gift of interpretation in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. Flourish like a palm tree in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Close your eyes by your head. Let us win somebody into the kingdom of God. I know there is somebody saying, I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. Indeed, this prayer will work for you only if you give your life to Jesus now. Anywhere you are, you say, Dr. Shiko, please pray for me. I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. Raise your hand. I will pray for you. I will pray for you now. Raise your hand. Wonderful. Wonderful. Push your hand above your head so that our workers can see your hand. God bless you, my daughter. God bless you, my daughter over there. Please, sister, lay hand on sisters. Brother, lay hand on brothers. Uh, uh, do it quickly. Do it quickly. Wonderful. You that have raised your hand, please, if you want to raise your hand and you're still fighting in your heart, should I raise my hand? Should I not? Just loose yourself. Take it easy. Surrender yourself to the Spirit of the Lord. Raise your hand above your head. There are things that only God can do for you. Nobody will be able to do it for you. So you need to give your life to Jesus. Raise your hand. Anywhere you are, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Now, everybody in this house, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I come to you as a sinner. Forgive all my sins. Come into my heart, save my life. Write my name in the book of eternal life. As from today, I'm born into the family of God. I'm born again. Wonderful. You've done well to give your life to Jesus. After a few minutes, we'll go with that fellow. They will minister to you. Amen. Shalom family, uh, my name is Pastor Teddy, I'm a son in the house. I'm here to glorify what the Lord has done in my life through the Holy Communion service. Last year, I began to develop some unusual symptoms in my body, like feet burning. I will have a feet burning in the point where I can't sleep properly in the night. I will be tired even if I just wake up in the morning. And, and, and the most thing that, that stood in, in discouragement or disturbing me, it was running up and down, I mean going to the toilet for more than six to five times a night. So I did not know actually how to handle the issue, though I thought it was my busy schedule that was doing that. And then I ended up start developing also unceasing headache, regardless of the amount of the painkiller would take, the headache would not just go. So I ended up going to, to see a doctor. Um, once they, 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 they check, my BP was exceedingly higher, and my glucose, which is the sugar level, that's where we found out that, according to the doctor, there was something that they needed to follow up. So they asked me some questions to know if I'm from the parents where, in my family, we have an issue of diabetes. 
effectively, my mother is sugar diabetic, and, um, and my father died out of a stroke. So the doctor uh, 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 suggested that we should go further with, with, with the checking. So they took the blood, the blood sample and sent to Lancet Laboratory. According to him, as he received the report, I was supposed to start the, the treatment, I mean the medication for life, for sugar diabetes. It was not a good news. I was very frustrated. That was last year. By the way, I didn't go back to him as he announced to me that I should go for treatment. I stay home and I did not pray as well. But this year, it got worse. Got worse where the feet suggestion, I mean the burning of the feet and the tangling on the feet got transferred into the hands. Remember, I'm a keyboard player playing with those things. And when a headache will start, it will take two days, it will not stop. So I decided to go to another hospital since that one was a private, and the probability to the public hospital, public clinic, I could have less cost on, on medication. So even if I have to take the medication for life, I will pay at least less. Going there just to find out, I meet one of the nurses in the hospital that was a member. I mean, she is still a member of CFC Push. I nearly ran away, but we took courage, we stayed. I was, I was asked all the exams as they did, and they also confirmed that I should be taking the medication for life. But before that, as they took my blood sample for another laboratory on a Tuesday, they told me to come and collect the results on, on Friday. But it was a week of Holy Communion, so I didn't go on that Friday. I decided to stay, pray, and fast, and take, partake the Holy Communion, which I did. When we came on Saturday of the Holy Communion, the man of God said, by holding the bread, he said, this is the body of Christ. This is the body of Jesus. This is the blood of Jesus. It's an instrument for healing. That was my only option. It was rather believe him or go take medication for life. Family, I believe the man of God. I believe the word of God and I partook on the Holy Communion. Monday of the next week, I went now to collect the report from the second clinic. They say I should be uh, going through medication for life. I asked that nurse, I asked her if she could restart again with the glucose test since I prayed. When the check after prayer, family, on their great surprise, my glucose was so normal that they couldn't understand what took place. They gave me a medication for, for a full month. They said they should give me a provision of full month for me to take them, then they will come and restart again. The full month was finished last week, Wednesday. I was completely declared free. I will no longer take any medication for life. I thank God for the Holy Communion. I thank God for the men of God. I thank God for the anointed product that we have here in the, the house. And the Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. My encouragement will be, whenever you come in the house of God, whether it is the Monday session of the anointing uh, oil or water service, whether you come in for any program, 12 o'clock altar, especially the Holy Communion, come with faith, come prepare that the Lord will do something. The Lord will heal you and you will be healed in Jesus' name.